can get some minutes to find them. Regular meeting from December 7th. <coughs> Any additions or corrections? No, I didn't find Wait a minute. It's okay. No wonder this is all. Yeah, she's got those. Okay. December 7th. Sorry about that. Okay, December 7th, not November 16th. Any additions or corrections? <coughs> nope. I'll make a motion to approve. Exactly. John? Yes. Mike? Yes. PJ? Yes. So we have no special meeting minutes then, correct? Correct. All right. All right, third uh, Monday of the month, we get a schedule report from the volunteer fire department. Chief's here. I have two things. One is uh, the fire devils put together 92 Christmas baskets and distributed Saturday and Sunday. Um, as you know, they go out to families that had a tragedy throughout the year. Or those are in need. And some of our elderly population together. So kudos to the fire devils. Uh, it's a huge undertaking. They put out 92 of them. So they did a great job. Uh, the second issue is uh, Mr. Thomas Ellie, our corporation president, is here to talk with you about 2016 contract. So I'll let him take the lead on that. Well, we uh, finished through up the contract uh, the same as last year, same amount. Uh, not really any changes to it. Keeping it relatively the same as we did last year. Okay. Yeah, and we did get a preliminary copy of that, which we sent to the prosecutor's office, uh, and just to uh, have her go over it. And she approved it, had no problem. So if you have the master copies, you need to be signed. We you have the master copies. All right. Okay. That having uh, two originals to sign. Excuse me, what is the dollar amount that's the same as last year? $696,000. I'm sorry, once again. $696,000. <coughs> All right, uh, that's the amount, and it's been reviewed by our legal representative, and I will make a motion to approve. <coughs> okay, I will second. John? Yes. Uh, Mike? Yes. BJ? Yes. Good for another year. Doesn't matter which one you guys want. That doesn't matter. We'll take this one. Thank you very much. As always, thank you guys for your services. And thank you for everything you guys do for the community. And you can go save lives and put out fires or whatever it is you need right. to do tonight. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. You right. want to thank you guys for that response for my father when he had the stroke five yeah, years ago. So. Have a good night. See you next. Bye, Any, uh, one else with any, uh, 
questions regarding public service. All right. Thank you, Chief. We'll go to scheduled reports from the trustees, and we'll start with Mr. Everly. Uh, a couple things here. You should have a couple letters there from the county engineers. Mm -hmm. signage down by Quinn Crystal Trail. Right. If you recall, we had a letter from the president of the Waterford Green Homeowners Association uh, requesting uh, a review of the traffic going in and out of Waterford Green off of Quinn. And they have uh, totally reviewed the situation and uh, they were specifically asking for a stop sign. And uh, <clears throat> you can review that, but they uh, they don't believe that's warranted there or would be a good idea. Right. So they're going to, they've kind of proposed a two-prong approach. One, we're going to have a sign that shows that it's a hard left turn to go into uh, Crystal Trail, and the other thing is that there's going to a sign. They're going to contact the park and say, "Hey, we want you to have a sign that says park entrance to delineate that Quinn stops, and basically the traffic goes left onto Crystal Trail, and that's what their recommendation is." Yeah, <coughs> I noticed in the report there was no accidents in that. No, there's there have been no accidents. Uh, they get a pretty thorough investigation, it appears. So we will be, uh, if you guys don't have any objections, we'll be forwarding that letter on to uh, the gentleman who's the president of the Homeowners Association. Yeah, no problem. The other instance actually just takes up a place a little bit up the street from there, up on Quinn. And it's, it's re uh, there's a gentleman there who's had, oh gosh, four or five years or more of uh, flooding. <laughs> and so we asked the engineer to come out and take a look at this thing and see what we could do to help. Uh, his, his driveway keeps washing out. We keep fixing it, you know. And so uh, they, they went out and did a field visit of that with the gentleman, Emmerich, uh, they came up with a recommendation that we need to increase the, uh, his driveway culvert in size and also add in, there's a there's a culvert that's kind of small, it's 15 inches, and they say that it needs to be 24 inches, about 40 feet of it. So we're going to, in the springtime, uh, we'll go ahead and do that project with that response. So Emmerich's going to uh, contact the gentleman. He, we are going to ask him to buy his pipe like any other resident would, but we'll install it. And we'll, we'll also, because of the kind of the history and whatnot of this other pipe, we're going to purchase the pipe and install it for him. And, uh, and it should be a, hopefully a good fix now to take us into the future. You know, with the two heavy rains we have. What road was that on, John? On Quinn. Uh, it's about two or three addresses north of DTJ. And uh, so Emmerich will get a hold of that gentleman and uh, discuss that with him. Um, we did get all the bollards installed over at the park. And uh, they were all nice. It looks really nice. He, uh, they're all cut off and it looks it nice and perfectly level. So it's, it looks real nice. Uh, so that's kind of what we had there. And then uh, I guess we've spent a couple of minutes with Mr. Dixon. And so we asked him to uh, come to the meeting and I'm going to in lieu of the fact that we keep him up till midnight tonight, let's, if we don't mind, let's jump down and 
take care of Mr. Dixon. I'm allowed to stay out late. No. <laughs> school night. Uh, I don't school know. Yeah. It's a school night. Oh, he's the Christmas vacation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, we've been having a, a weekly meetings, uh, the road guys and, and Jim and, and actually uh, uh, Larson as well. And we do have, uh, you know, kind of like a preliminary design here. So why don't you come up and pull up a chair and... I have a copy of, this is a schematic uh, of the building. There's about four or five times there of the, the site, the first one and the next one. It is um, the overall building size. There's some elevations back through the pages. And there's a blow up of the administration part of the building, A1A. And then you get a perspective of what we can put inside the building. You get a, a cut through the building showing a vehicle. If you look up here, I'll show you. On this drawing right here, the last drawing, you'll see a vehicle inside. It gives you some sort of perspective as to the building and the trucks that are in there and what we're, what we're dealing with. One of the issues being we have to be able to jack the truck up in here. Yeah, we're going to have a bay where there'll be a lift in there so that we can do uh, maintenance on the vehicles, oil, oil and lubrication and so forth. So we need um, some clearance up above. Well, they also need clearance for raising the beds and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. We give them a lot of thought to this. This is, I like to say, this is schematic. Um, we've been working with a design firm, Larson Architects, as part of our design build team. and. Um, given a lot of thought, a lot of ideas have come across the table and, and we have uh, purged them and, and and taken the best and applied it to this uh, project and I think we've got a really good start. Um, in fact, tonight I wanted to make a recommendation to the board that we bring aboard Hummel Construction as part of the design build team so that we can move on to the next stage. Uh, we have a preliminary budget on this building right now of a million nine ninety five. And um, that's what we're holding to, and everything that comes down the road will be um, looked at and given its own value. But um, that's my uh, recommendation based on the interview process that all of you went through with all the applicants back in, I think it was August and September, and um, our track record with Hummel Construction has been excellent, and uh, they'd be... Uh, a good part of this design and build team to bring aboard at this time so we can move on with the working drawings that we need to get done in the next six to eight weeks. And with our history with uh, what they do with the fire department, you working it's, together with them and Larson. Yeah. Uh, I think just... It's been excellent, you know, and it, this will be a, this is what they call a design and build type of uh, venture where it's all open book. And we bring Homo board as part of the design build team, and we we bring his uh, consultants in for the, the uh, electrical, mechanical, plumbing, and sprinkler, and so forth. The big trade items. Sit them down with Larson and his engineers, and together we design the specification of the pieces and parts that go into the building based on um, life life of the product or the the uh, application and the cost of it. And uh, right now we, we're talking about doing this whole building in LED lighting, which is just an example of where we're going with this. And then we got to sprinkle the building. We've got to come up with uh, some thought for it. There'll be a fire pump here. There'll be outside, out, underground, outside storage for water to supply to the sprinkler system. There's a lot of engineering involved, and it takes more than just one person's ideas or thoughts to put it on paper to make this work. We want to bring in everybody we can and get them together. So far it's worked with, with the road crew and, and with uh, John here and even the chief has given us some great help on information that we have applied to this project so far. It's just everything is, is falling into place. Just one after another we've, we've been able to address it and, and um, still hold the design and the cost of this building right at where it should be. So we're, we're under $100 a square foot. I mean, I don't I don't know how you can beat that. I just, I'm, I'm pleased with that so far. And I think uh, we don't see anything down the road that's going to 
cause that to go anywhere else, but at the same or down at the end of the job. So with an open book process, Hummel has to list all of the bidders that come in. He has to solicit three bids of every part of the job. And then we look at the bidders, and we being myself and, and uh, John here <coughs> and the architect, and we pick the guys that we want to do the work. We want the best subs for Hummel to do the work. And, um, and it's based on the experience and their qualifications and their price. And then all of that is put in an open book, and I, I didn't bring it in with me, but I, I had a copy. It's real thick, but it lists every cost on the job and every bid on the job, and then at the end of the job, Hummel is only entitled to 10% overhead and 5% profit, and that's it. And when I did the job up at Auburn Career Center, we did design and build, and it's a new program that the state of Ohio has allowed public entities to do now. Instead of going out for a public bid and being stuck with a low bidder who's not qualified or doesn't care about their quality of work, uh, the state has allowed public entities now to go into a design and build type of construction where they get to interview uh, the builder and the architect as a design and build team, and then all the costs are, are open book. They're on the table, and you can see exactly what you're spending. In the Auburn Career Center, we did a, a $2 million job. And it came in $35,000 on the budget. And the contractor wrote a check back to Auburn Career Center for the balance. They got the money back. So it's, 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 a, it's a good system. It's the best system that I've seen in, in a long time coming down the road from the state of Ohio. I really like the system a lot. It's best for everybody concerned. You get, you get your choice of builder, your choice of architect, your choice of construction manager. And it doesn't cost you any more money. It costs you less, in fact than going out and, and doing a public bid. So my recommendation tonight is that uh, we bring Hummel on board and we get moving on to construction documents, working drawings for this project so we can break ground in the spring. I have no problem with that. I think it sounds like a great idea. I, I think it's a real good idea. I, I, uh, I'm very pleased that um, the state of Ohio is come on board as many states in the country are doing this. I think everybody to work together right from the beginning. You yeah. know, it's, it's well, if you remember, everybody on the same page. Right you remember the fire station. We yes. were, Hummel was the third bidder. He was the third bidder. The first guy, uh, you know, he the only thing he ever built in his life was a garage, and it was his own. <laughs> and, and the second guy, he tried to cheat us with two different bids, and we had to throw him out, so we ended up with Hummel by default, but it turned out to be the best of, of uh, all three of them. So... Um, that's so why I'm the motion sure. to bring them on. Yeah, you well, we'll have to sign a contract with them, and uh, so if we make a motion, we bring them on, then uh, in the meantime, we'll have to draw up a, a contract. What does that contract look like? It's a it's an a, it'll be an AIA form similar okay. to mine, similar to Larson's, it's right. A141, and it's for hiring a builder as part of a design and build team. And he'll once I tell him what the outcome is tonight. He'll get a contract, a pencil written up, pencil copy of that contract written up. He'll get it to me or to you, to John here, and then we'll submit it to the prosecutor like we did for my contract and for Larson's. Right. Once she signs off on it, then he'll bring you a hard copy on January 4th. He's the 4th, right. January 4th, right. and then it'll be signed in front of you by him, and one of you sign it, and he's good to go. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to <coughs> bring him on board for Humble Construction. As part of the design team. Design and build team. Design and build yeah. team, yeah. I'll second that. John? Yes. Mike? Yes. PJ? Yes. Um, just real, real quick, Jim, and, and I met with Jim and, and Mr. Larson about three weeks ago or whatever it was. A uh, couple changes on the original concept drawings, so just for public knowledge here is... Uh, there was an exterior off the main box that was going to be part of the, the for the offices and the right. and the restrooms and meeting rooms and storage and things like that, and that's now been moved into the main building. So there's it's just a square or rectangular building now without any right. without any add on that. What's it about 2,600 square feet, give or take? We're going to 1,600 is inside for administration. It's actually less than that now because we have taken part of the storage system and 
converted it from walls and drywall and metal stud to chain link fencing for security. Well, it's about 40 by 40. Okay, that's the very, okay. But if you yeah, had the very out to out. Right, you yeah. had the lubricants, mechanics, tools, stands and lifts, and the hand tool storage. That's that's what I was working from. Yeah. That's about 75 by 35. Right? In the corner there? 75 by 34. Anyway, so the, the exterior part is no longer exterior, it's all inside. No, it isn't. And, and we looked right. at that from the very beginning because we thought, well, if we put an administration wing on the outside of this metal building, we're back to conventional construction, and the cost of conventional construction is $200 plus a square foot. If we keep it inside in the metal building, the cost of construction is $100 a square foot. I mean, to me, it was a no-brainer. If we were better off to make the inside, the big building, bigger to accommodate that at $100 a square foot than we are to put this addition on the outside at $200 a square foot. So, Which we, we did go wider than the original concept? No, we, I, it was always 100 feet, PJ, but we went longer. It was 180 feet originally, and we went to 200 feet. Okay. So now it's 100 by 200, the outside of the building. Those are rough dimensions. But. And the, the other thing, and Jim knows what I'm talking about, too, and I was really hoping we could new construction and then demo the old building right. following. Yeah, we looked at that, too. And yeah. after looking at it, <coughs> you'll remember some of this, too. If you remember when we did the soil bores way prior to the fire station, we looked all down the hill there right. and found what we found. There was some fill put in at that north West corner. Well, west corner, yeah, you know, and a lot more has been added since those borings. Yeah, it's kind and, of like and, a. Uh, you know, we want to keep the the road all the way around, and you're just into non-buildable soils. You are, and, nice. you, and you don't want to encroach on where the salt dome is either. You want that to stay pretty much where it is, because that's a constant event. You guys have called them events. It's a constant event thing all winter long. And that traffic has to be maintained at all times. Well, and then <coughs> Jim pointed out that uh, when you were involved with Russell, they had a problem with soil. Yeah, Russell and, and, uh, and also up at Auburn Career Center, yeah. We found a house up at Auburn. You told me about the house, yeah. yeah. And that's that. We're digging becomes, a foundation. We found some white house buried in the basement. You know, based on, based on the budget you got and the fun thing that we're going to do here tonight, <coughs> we don't need a, some... Thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollar variable jumping up here. No, we don't, and it's, it's, you know, I'm trying to keep it away from being rocket science. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to keep it as simple as we can and still accommodate the need here um, by this community. And this is, to me, this is the the ultimate way to go. The roads all work good for the proposals. Yeah, we're, we're okay with it. We're gonna move the helipad over just a little bit. Yeah, it looks like a thirty-five foot ship. Yeah, we're right, gonna push it west. We actually probably met uh, five times now, but and the road guys have been part of those discussions. And John sat in on the last one and, and helped us out with a lot of the utilities. So, uh, you know, this represents all of the changes we've made up till today. We think, think we're fairly, uh, fairly. Uh, zeroed in. We yeah, know where the building yeah. needs to sit. We yeah. know that. And uh, so uh, we don't anticipate any big ticket things coming yeah. down the road. There's we've looked at the storm system and we can accommodate that. We've looked at the sanitary and we're good with that. We looked at the <coughs> what's out there is adequate with what we need. Uh, we just have to bring it into the new building. Uh, gas we're gonna move the meter up on the other side of the road so uh, it's out of the way. And, I mean, it just in, in the type of building it is. Now you've got one door in, one door out. You don't have doors opening and closing all day long to accommodate individual trucks. Um, it's just a really good, good design. Uh, please, please. If at some time you needed to pick up some more space, David, we do have how can we expand it a little bit? And I, we really don't anticipate that. I, I think we've got enough space here that uh, we can increase the number of trucks and uh, it's, you know it's, it'd be like a 60% increase in the number of trucks and 
as long as we keep handling the, our labor situation the way it is, I think we'll be fine. Well, it's not just the trucks either. It's inside storage of all the equipment. That's what you're after. Yeah, well, we have a uh, home for everything in there right now. And additional. Right. Right. Yeah, well, that's what we're looking at. Same thing we did the fire department. Is, you know, we built something to come back five years later and say it was inadequate. Say we're going to build something I, do it in advance so it's going to last us 35 years. Yeah, this is good for 40 years. Excuse me if I can get it out of my throat. How many bays were finally planned in the construction? Bays of what? For the for trucks. The vehicles? Yeah. <coughs> These are all seen right, lines on the floor. Like there's, no, there. there's no stalls or anything in here, so this could change by just taking the paint off the floor. But there is uh, uh, okay. there's room in there for ten trucks right now. Plus all the equipment. And okay, then, but it's all open space. It's all open space. Yeah. Okay, well, I guess you'll get a hold of Hummel then, and you'll get. And he will be here on the fourth. I'll be sure he's here. I'll come with him as soon as he gets me a copy of his draft of his contract. I'll get a hold of you and we'll get it up to the prosecutor's office and uh, get him on board so we can move on. We have about, like I say, we have about six, seven weeks. We want to. I just go quick. Yeah, we want. We we have to get Hummel on board so we can get Larson underway. Because Larson's sitting there waiting now. He's going as far as he can go, and now he's all for everybody to get together, and it'll be really interesting. And I want to say thanks, Chief, for giving us some space over at the fire station for our meetings. We really uh, appreciate well, that. Well, that's, well. that's a, I mean, we have a place we can meet. Yeah, we're in a, we had, what, 10 of us in an 8 by 8 office. It was, it was four sitting and six standing, I think, so thank you for that. I'm uh, quite welcome. Okay. All right. Thank you, Jim. Okay. Thank you. Um, uh, well, we're on the garage. Fred, you got this resolution for the funding mechanism for this situation. This is the resolution for the um, for the bond issuance. This is what was presented uh, at the last meeting, and uh, it is to issue uh, bonds in the principal amount not to exceed. $2 million dollars and we did have our prosecutor Brian Feeney take a look at it she has approved it and is waiting for execution <coughs> I don't know if anybody had any questions about the nope. resolution no I've talked to you at length about that and uh, that's to be uh Back by funds available, which uh, between the inside millage and and uh, the other sources of income for the road department, we feel we're in pretty good shape to take this on. Yeah. resolution that I don't believe I'm going to read in its entirety. We appreciate that. Uh, resolution providing for the issuance and sale of not to exceed $2 million, $2 million of bonds to pay costs of the construction of a new township service garage and all necessary related appurtenances and equipment. And then it goes into say all the stuff that Fred, uh, fiscal officer, has executed already. And... Uh, Our responsibilities and the bank's responsibilities. And we don't have a rate solid on this because no. we aren't going to borrow any money until we have to. So and, and this doesn't, this does not commit us to anything. We still would have to have the bonds issued by the bank and sign off on those. But this gets the process started and gets our council working on it. And it pretty much just gave us the boundaries and the guidelines of where we were going to be with it. So. 
I think what we'll know a little more, we'll have the pencil sharpened down a little bit as soon as we get home on board here. And we start going through item by item by item by item, and we start to beat down the cost of every item. So I think we're, you're, we're well within the margin, Fred. And, uh, I think if I understood right, when you actually go to sell the box, you want a, a number. Is that right? Say that again? You want a final number, like if it's 1.85. Mm -hmm. That's how many bonds. That's how much of the bonds you want. Right. Correct. I don't know if I'm going to have to. Okay. Um, We've been advised of uh, notice requirements, section 121.22 of the revised code, implementing rules adopted by the board pursuant, pursuant thereto were complied with for the meeting. So I will make a motion to adopt this resolution 2015-17. Second. Ms. John? Yes. Mike? Yes. PJ? Yes. John, you got anything else tonight? No, I think that should cover us for yeah. a while. We'll move on uh, back up the agenda to Michael Troyan. Yeah, I think I have is to go with the contract for the fire department, so I will concede my time to Mr. May. Um, I have your typical, usual financial reports in front of you guys, including your fund summary report, revenue status, and appropriation status reports, as well as payment listing covering the warrants in front of you. Uh, warrants 2735 through 2785 in uh, a total amount, including a couple of vouchers, total amount of $21,422.01. I need to present to the board Temporary appropriations for fiscal year 2016. And uh, of course, every year we go into the beginning of the year with temporary appropriations, and then at uh, the end of the first quarter, we adopt permanent appropriations. The appropriations that I put together for our temporary appropriations, I tried to get this as close to permanent appropriations as I could so that uh, next quarter we can. Just do a little bit of fine tuning, hopefully, get some more numbers on the service garage, and uh, and, and get something a little bit more dialed in. But these are are fairly close. And if you look at the the numbers on here, the number on the numbers in the left hand column under expenditures under 2015, that's what we had appropriated for 2015. Those are not our 2015 expenditures. I took, I took what we've spent so far this year, and I used that to come up with the 2016 numbers so I could kind of gauge it on what we've actually spent. Um, a, couple of, a couple of areas we had to increase our appropriations, such as areas um, including um, health, health care, uh, which bumped up the salaries under administrative salaries, administrative other costs. Uh, there was probably a 5% increase in health care costs, so that bumped up those, uh, the, those numbers. And there was a couple of places in here where there were some utility costs that I noticed were where we had appropriated a lot more than what we actually spent. So I, I cut those down, for example, under 2191 under the fire levy. Um, we must have a pretty efficient building over there because we had budgeted about 5000 for for um, natural gas, and we spent about half that this past year. So those are just some examples of some of the numbers that have gone up and down. But for the most part, 
the appropriations are very close to what we had last year. We did a pretty good job of budgeting for last year, so most of the numbers are are fairly similar to last year. Now, from my point of view, I think we could adopt this tonight and go into next year because they're only temporary. We can do our permanent appropriations in the first quarter. And then even after we do our permanents, we can always do supplementals. But um, if you guys need time to take a look at it or want more information, then we can do that too. I don't see why we can yeah, If you feel comfortable with it, I mean, like I said, it's temporary. It sounds like you've got it pretty well. Yeah, the only other thing I would, I would point out would be in the road and bridge fund, You'll see that we have a um, potential carryover of $550,000 in road and bridge. The reason that's there is because we took $570,000 out of the general fund and put it into road and bridge this past year. Most of that went to the Stafford Road Project. Right. Um, so that's why that number looks inflated. But that that $550,000 would normally be in the general fund and be carried over from there. We don't really have a mechanism other than going to court and asking for an order to take that money back out and put it into the general fund. But we we have a long history, though, of taking those funds and moving mm -hmm. them. So, yeah. yeah, supplementing the road department anyway. So, so I think that's right. fine. And the, <coughs> the reason why we end, and the reason why we ended up with it still in there because you'd say, well, we put it in there and didn't it get spent, was because we were, I was trying to get a, I would, had to get ahead of the tax advance, so we hadn't gotten our tax advances, so I used money out of the general fund into road and bridge, and then the tax advance came in. So. And there's nothing wrong with doing that either. I mean, no, there's, there's nothing wrong with it. I just wanted to point out that's why the numbers look higher there. You know, the fact that we that we have the inside millage split in a 1.6 for R&B and 1.4 general fund, and yet still have been taking general fund money, putting it into road and bridge, is where we got the idea that we can probably do the scratch. So, well, you know, it, it, it's, uh, you know, we may not be uh, using general fund money to supplement projects to the degree that we have in the past, mm -hmm. but we're using it on the infrastructure now, the building itself. Right. So. I make a motion that we uh, adopt these temporary appropriations. I'll second. Uh, John? Yes. Mike? Yes. PJ? <coughs> yes. <coughs> That's all I have. Okay, only a couple things I'll have to add to all that is uh, the uh, fire pit we talked about up at Adam Hall, mm -hmm. the Eagle Scout project for uh, I think Matthew Stanonis did that. Chief, you went up and approved our site, and it's all done. It looks actually, I think it looks pretty good up there. It's uh, you know I can see this getting some some use at, at, at uh, certain events up there, um, build it on the curb, I don't know if you've been up there, mm -hmm. but uh, the proposed picture had it on this half round circular thing, and well, we found a half round circular thing, and that's right where he put it, so uh, fit right in with, with everything else. Um, you saw, and this is on the agenda <coughs> too, that um, Watershed Partners sent their, oh, basically their summary of what they do with the township every year, you know, it's uh, uh, something they've been doing now for four or five years, I think maybe more, or they consistently every year, they spell out where they've provided technical assistance and, and various other things that they've done for, for our township uh, specifically, it's for each township. Um, I did call her, Heather Elmer. Um, 
real interested in the in, in what stage we're at in our park up there and things like that. They've uh, it seems like maybe they want to shift some of their focus down into Draga County, where a lot of it's been in Lake County for for years. And going to meet with her later on this week before the holiday. Um, mentioned, you know, as we talked about up here, that we've got uh, kids turf in the parking lot, or you know, and she says, you know, there's some grant sources available for a hard surface. Of course, this would be, it may be those paver bricks or something, mm -hmm. that, you know, but uh, it, it may not be a, a good man. Yeah, it may not be the, the kind of product we're looking for up there, but I don't know if that's what we're going to get together here later this week, and uh, she's going to let me know what's available and a and, uh, few things that uh, could be funded through uh, that NatureWorks. You remember mm -hmm. that? We, we might have made an application to NatureWorks for something years ago, and it was like all grant things. You wait and wait and wait. Yeah. You and Gene and I went to something right. up at Patterson Center mm -hmm. about nature works, I don't remember. Mm -hmm. um, just, um, speaking, speaking of grants for the park, when I went down to Columbus to that uh, funding seminar that I went to, there they were talking about a couple of ODNR grants that uh, are, yep. for, are for recreational trails and playgrounds. There's a specific playground grant. This may be through that nature works yeah. thing. You around tomorrow? Could be. Are you around? Mm-hmm. Um, I have to call you and see if you're, you know, can make this one do this get together. But yeah, she's gonna basically. I, I think maybe they're doing it for some more, like I said, more focus on Georgia County. They're gonna help us with finding grant sources and filling out the grant applications, <coughs> which is what they do. So um, hopefully, I'll have something uh, to report on that at the next meeting. But I was encouraged that uh, you know they, they she she sought she she sought us out on this so I think they're kind of serious about about moving some interest out this way. Okay, we did uh, temporary appropriations. That was Watershed Partners. John, you got to the traffic study on Quinn and Crystal. Uh, last February, we started, uh, I think it was the 11 or 12 years that uh, we needed to update our land use plan. And that was set in motion, like last February, we had a, a joint meeting with our commission and our board and prosecutor's office and uh, planning director and uh, uh, zoning commission initiated that, I think it was by early February or March. There was some follow-up inventory-type things that we had to do mid-summer. Everything got there timely, and uh, we have, uh, I guess at this point, since we haven't approved it or adapted it yet, but uh, uh, proposed uh, land use plan update. It's going to be dated 2015, but what are you going to do? <laughs> December, it's December. There has to be a December. Personally, I want to... Thank Dave Dietrich's office. Sure. I, I'm thinking, this is with the commission right now, who really, it's kind of, it's in their bailiwick to initiate this and to get the first look at it, really. You know, right. At the same time, we're looking at it. But I'm kind of thinking, John, and I know we've got a road program coming up. This is all on uh, electronic format. We could do little PowerPoint yeah. thing up here. Do that? I don't know when we're going to schedule yeah. it, but we're going to, you know, we we'll don't... probably we'll want to do the road thing to be real honest with you at the second meeting. We're well, uh, the organizational is kind of out. Yeah, that's going to be a long night. It's a long so. night, and I don't think we want to do a double feature because nobody's going to stay no, awake maybe, through everything. Be, so. I, mean, I don't know what... Uh, maybe, maybe first meeting in February and the yeah. commission have it for a month yeah. and, and, and we'll look at it and I don't know if you remember, PJ, but I'm sure you do. A previous board went out and got estimates because they were going to go with an outside party to create this land use plan. And it was that was kind of a bad idea that it was able to be stopped, but the price tag was $72,000. 
And uh, this is two times Dave Dietrich's office. They did the last one, mm -hmm. and they've done this for us. And I can <coughs> tell you that they've done a very thorough job. Done a very thorough job. And, uh, and I think as soon as we get the revisions made, but we want to definitely address a formal correspondence up there to Mr. Dietrich because uh, we're not everybody just gets that done twice like that. Well, it's it's uh, you know it the recommendation. There's no real law behind it, but it is the backing it's it's material for your. You got to have it. If, if, if you give it, if you need it, you need it. And it's got to be somewhat timely. They say ten years is about right. Ten, twelve years is about every year years you want to do that. So. Um, not everybody keeps up with that at that rate. Uh, we certainly try to, and we should take now for another ten, twelve years. So, but yeah, we'll we'll get our movie presentations. Uh, Scheduled here so we don't double up on anything. Of course. That might be a good idea. <clears throat> okay, the organizational meeting um, will be, and we have to announce this so we don't have to advertise in the paper again, the you know, legal ad. Uh, will be Monday, January 4th at 7 30 p.m. right here. We have a couple of uh, applicants that are interested in Zoning Board of Appeals or Zoning Commission that we're going to interview in executive session tonight. So that gets us to the end of the agenda here. Is there any, uh, uh, there won't be any uh, business, business conducted after the executive session. Go ahead. Okay. Just a, just a couple of questions. One regards um, uh, warrant, if I get this correctly, 2770. <coughs> and it appears to be a bill for $284 uh, to Manji Manja. And I was just curious what social event um, that bill covered. <laughs> We're having an employee appreciation holiday party mm. this week. That's what Okay. And the other question concerns the bond issue. Uh, since this is a muni bond, to what extent will rates be determined by the or influenced by the 25 basis point increase last week by the Federal Reserve? I would imagine that there, there is a possibility of a rate increase. I don't know. We don't have anything signed off by the bank, so it's not set in stone. But they have been holding to their original 3.6 so uh, what was it again 2.6 3. I didn't 6. hear 3.6 3. 3. 3. 3. Okay, yes okay anybody else Merry Christmas to everybody. Thanks for coming out. Thank you. 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 Thank you.